Hi, welcome. Hope Savira here, and today is just one quick move. Maybe you're a teacher, or maybe you're an avid student and just looking for something new and fun to add to your practice. Today I'm going to show you an awesome pose called Flying Bow. And so I'll show you a short sequence on how to get into the pose, but then also I'll just kind of give you some tippers on maybe some prep poses to help warm the spine more efficiently to really rock your bow. Let's straddle begin. Position. And from straddle, engage the inner thighs. Let your pelvis glide forward as you are up and back, engaging the lower part of your glutes in the inner thighs, pelvic floor, so your back feels no pain and then exhale hands to prayer. Let's just do that three more times to warm up the spine. Inhale, and exhale. Now anytime you're extending, your hips lead, not your head. So instead of throwing yourself back this way, you're leading with the pelvis, engaging your bottom body, and exhale, a lot of good core work. And again, inhale, and exhale. Last time, inhale, and now exhale, press your hips back forward, fold straddle style, relax your head down, keeping your feet parallel, engage your inner thighs as you fold, trying to keep the openness of the lower back. Now draw the arms behind, nice little chest expander just to start warming up the shoulders. Let's bend the knees, sit back into your hips and heels, draw your heart forward without spilling your belly out. And then exhale again, folding. Nice release for the hamstrings. Release your arms to the floor. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, side lunge over to the right. Getting a little openness in the hips and thighs. Lean to the inside of your right leg as you reach with your left arm. Nice side stretch. Sit back into your hips and heels. Inhale, coast through center. Let's do the same thing to the opposite side. Exhale, keeping your core strong, keeping a neutral spine. So that means we're not excessively arching or rounding. Lean to the inside of the left leg with the elbow and, sh uh, elbow and shoulder. And now reach your right arm over for a nice side stretch. Lean your weight back again rather than forward. Keep breathing. And then inhale back to center. Let's turn to the left. Drop the back knee to the floor and curl the toes. Press through the top of the back foot. Roll yourself up, exhale. Level your hips. So most likely the hip of the front leg has to pull down. Hip of the back leg has to pull up. Your socket is leading, not your belly. Keep a nice neutral spine. Inhale, reaching up. Press into the front leg. Rather than going sloppy deep, I want you to try to almost think about being more buoyant. Engage the inner thighs, interlace the fingers above, relax your shoulders, now press from your back big toe to your pointer finger. Inhale through the nose, breathe into your lungs rather than into your lower belly. Exhale, engage your pelvic core. Exhale, hands to heart. Bring your block close now. Place it to the inside of the front foot. Step your front foot one pace out to the left. Bend your back knee. Come above the kneecap onto the quad muscle. And if you need to, grab a strap. Maybe grab your pant leg. If your body will let you, grab hold of the ankle. Now, being really low on the floor, I actually want you to try to bring your torso more vertical as you draw the leg in, which is going to increase that abdomen, groin, and quad stretch. Inhale through the nose. I'm not forcing, I'm allowing. Exhale through the nose, long, deep breaths. Try to keep the chest open and wait for your body to give you permission. Exhale, release the back leg, move the block off to the left. Runner's lunge, square your hips, exhale, roll yourself up steady, bend and extend your arms. Nice, so again, I'm squaring my hips, I'm actually going to scooch back so that when we come forward, you're not going to lose my head. Level and square the hips, engage the inner thighs, lower glutes, pelvic core strong, pull your trunk out of your pelvis rather than sitting into the lower back. Inhale, let's interlace again, get a lot of good length, exhale, front knee lunges, back heel pulls. 
If you know you have a really tight pelvis, bend the back knee and that will help you keep neutral. On the next exhalation, move off the back leg and into airplane. I'm going to scooch back again. Sorry guys. Keep the base knee bent and really focus on squaring the hips, flex the heel, lift the heel. Now belly stays strong, outstretch your arms, lift through the tops of the hands into a nice airplane variation. At the last second, you're going to extend your leg, quad is strong not to lock the knee. If you're struggling to square the hips, keep the base knee bent. Now exhale, tuck your right arm, grab your block, highest level if you're a little tighter in the hips. Bend the base knee to open and stack the hips. So we're trying to bring one hip onto the other. Flex the top foot and feel the glutes move towards the heel. Belly is strong, open your chest and extend the top arm into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. Remember your weight ratio. There's more weight in the leg than the arm. Let's say 80, 20, or 90, 10. Open your hips even more. Now tuck your top arm, bend the top knee, watch not to let the knee turn up, but keep it level and grab for the ankle. Keep the heel tucked to the glute as you roll the top chest open. Now slowly start to press the heel away from you, bowing your chest forward and bowing your pelvis forward. Again, watching not to creep the knee up as you're gonna kind of avoid that stretch. So it'll be easier, but not the good kind of easier. Stay grounded through the big toe. All right, here we go, flying bow. Bend the base knee, turn your torso to be square with the floor. Slowly, either keep your hand on the block, you can lift the block up, or take your hand off the block and grab for the foot. Stay here. You have to honor my balance here today. Or slowly start to press the foot up to arc the body. Slowly hand to the floor, stand and split. Exhale, runner's lunge. Back into straddle. Take your black width. Give yourself a little gratitude for the new pose. I'm just going to shift my body again so I stay on camera. Exhale, hug your thighs, hug your hamstrings. Back into fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, side lunge to the left. Lean to the inside of the leg. Nice long spine, try not to drop your belly. Swipe your right arm to the left, nice stretch. Inhale, coast up through center, exhale, opposite side. Keep your feet grounded, sit back into your heels rather than your knees. Your hip is a better anchor point than your knee is. Inhale, come back up. Let's rotate to the right. Drop the back knee and curl the toes. Just press through the top of the back foot. If you want to check your back leg, it should be directly behind the knee rather than sinking in or out. Usually a sign of a hip issue. Exhale, roll yourself up. Level your hips. And on the exhalation, start to slowly lower. Now you should feel hamstring and glute on the front leg. If you don't, you know your pelvis is kinked sideways. If you'd like to, extend just one arm to get that great side body length, or go for both. Front foot feels flat and firm. Keep your breath cycling. Exhale, hands to the floor, grab your block, place it to the inside of the right foot. Now come to the top point 
of that patella, come onto the quad, grab for the back leg, bring your torso upright, core strong, slowly bring that leg in. Each side will have its own thing going on, so just pay attention to that. By all means, you can turn your block up higher or even rest on the thigh muscle. If I play with the direction of my pelvis, it can also change that stretch. If you need to, please pad the knee. One thing I always try to encourage my students is to not confuse speed with function. Also not to confuse flow with moving fluidly. Moving fluidly is about using your breath and being mindful. Release the leg, move your block, roll the toes under, runner's lunge, square your hips, exhale, roll yourself up, arms bend and extend, feel your body long, natural curves of the spine. I'm gonna scooch back again. And breathe. Now the type of the quad relationship with the groin, so as and lower back is, the more you end up in this big jaunt because the back leg is being forced straight, bend that guy to help neutral the pelvis. Find a focal point on the floor, arms float out to T. Keep the front leg bent as you push off the back leg. Into airplane, square the hips, and really get into the deep, deep glutes. Exhale, hands to the block. Now, if your hips are more restrictive, I really want to encourage you to use a higher block. The floor is not the goal. Balance and openness is. I'm going to turn my block down a little bit longer arms. Block is diagonal with the foot. Keep your weight balanced on the foot. Keep the base knee bent to help open the hips. Flex your top foot as you lengthen and open your whole torso. Tuck the top arm and emphasize the shoulders opening. Ground through the entire base foot. Bend the top knee without turning the knee up. Keep that knee parallel and just pull the heel gently into the glute for a nice quad stretch. Maybe slightly near a knee stretch too, so honor that. Try not to let your torso dump forward. Leg is strong. Now slowly bend the base knee. Turn your torso square with the floor. This may be enough for you. Slowly grab for the foot, square your body down even more. When you're ready, start to bow. Stand split, nice job. Exhale, runner's lunge. Downward dog. Take them really wide, sit back on your heels. Keep the belly lifted to honor the natural curve of the spine and let your body stretch. Exhale, roll yourself up and come to seated. It's amazing when you allow yourself to be creative and let your breath flow with your heart's greatest desires, what can come to you on the mat. So I want to encourage you to implement flying bow pose into your practice and see what happens. Share it with your students, share it with your friends, most importantly, share it with yourself. For more information, visit my website at hopesavara.com. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube page, please do, and you can take advantage of all my new videos that are coming out. And also make sure you put it in your calendar, October 2014, I'll be coming out with an online e-course for my Core Functional Fitness Level 1 teacher training. See you soon. Namaste.